In section 5.1, we're going to look at antiderivatives. The big idea of this section is that we are going to reverse the process of finding the derivative. In the last few chapters, we've found derivatives and then used them to do various things. Now we're going to reverse that process. A typical question is something like, if I know that the derivative of f of x is 2x plus 3, what would my original function have been? Or what could my original function f of x be in order to have a derivative, which is 2x plus 3? It turns out there are actually a lot of functions that work. If my original function had been x squared plus 3x, when I took a derivative, the 2 would come out front, x to the first, so I get 2x. And the derivative of 3x is 3. Also, if I would have let my function be x squared plus 3x plus 5, the derivative of this function is also 2x plus 3 plus 0, or in other words, 2x plus 3. Also, if my function had been x squared plus 3x minus 7, the derivative of this would have been 2x plus 3 minus 0. So in other words, the derivative would have been 2x plus 3. Notice that any of these three functions give us the same derivative. Also, it's pretty clear that these three functions are the same except for their constant part. That's going to be true throughout this section. We're going to find an antiderivative. There's going to be a lot of functions that can give us a certain derivative. Those functions will all be the same, except with different constant terms. When we write our general function, we will write them of the form f of x is equal to x squared plus 3x plus capital C, where this capital C can stand for any constant that we want. So all of the functions from our last example that have derivative 2x plus 3 will look like this. They'll all look like x squared plus 3x plus some constant. This brings us to the concept of the antiderivative. Let's start with a function lowercase f of x. Let's assume this lowercase f of x is a derivative of another function. So an antiderivative of lowercase f of x is a function capital F of x such that the derivative of capital F is equal to lowercase f. This is a slight difference from what we had notationally earlier. So pay really close attention. The lowercase f is the derivative, and the uppercase f is the antiderivative. So the antiderivative is a function such that when you take the derivative, 
you get the derivative function back. We say since antiderivatives will all be the same except for a constant c, the set of all antiderivatives of f of x is called the indefinite integral of f. Once again, the set of all antiderivatives will be the indefinite integral of f. And we denote the indefinite integral this way. It's a big line. It looks kind of like a really elongated s of f of x with the differential dx tacked on. What that means is you're integrating and you are using x as the variable. So the dx signifies that you're using x as the variable. When you find the indefinite integral, what you typically do is you find some antiderivative and then put a plus C to stand for any constant. Remember, the indefinite integral was the class of all antiderivatives. So this indefinite integral is all antiderivatives. And if I want to find all antiderivatives, I just need to find one antiderivative and then add a constant, an arbitrary constant to it. So the indefinite integral of lowercase f is equal to capital F plus any constant that we want, where capital F is any antiderivative we choose. Let's try this example. Let's find the indefinite integral of x to the fourth plus 3x dx. When I start saying this from now on, I'll say the, we'll find the integral of x to the fourth plus 3x with respect to x. A lot of times, rather than stating dx, we say with respect to x because that's the variable that we're integrating with respect to. That's what this dx differential means. Let's think through how we would come up with an antiderivative for x to the fourth plus 3x. If I want the derivative to have an x to the fourth, then what I need to do based on the rule of polynomial is I need to raise the exponent by one so that when I take a derivative, I can subtract one from the exponent and get x to the fourth. Again, derivative, we'd subtract one from the exponent. So when I'm trying to reverse that, I add one to the exponent. Now also, when I take a derivative, this five is going to get multiplied out front. In order to counteract that, so I get the correct coefficient of one in front of x to the fourth, I need to also divide by five. So if I take the derivative of x to the fifth times one fifth, the five will multiply times one fifth. That'll cancel each other out and give me one. And then I'll lower the exponent by one, and that'll become x to the fourth. We can do the same thing with 3x. 3x, let's focus on the x right now. x is x to the first. If I want to take a derivative of something and get x to the four, first, I need x squared so that when I lower the exponent by one, you get an x to the first. When I take the derivative, I'm gonna multiply 
out front by two. In order to counteract that, I put a division by two so that when I take the derivative, the two comes out front, multiplies by three halves and gives me three. And then the two gets lowered by one. And there we go. Now, this is an antiderivative for x to the fourth plus 3x. In order to complete the indefinite integral, I merely need to say I can add any constant that I want because the derivative of a constant number is zero. Therefore, the anti, well, an antiderivative of x to the fourth plus three x is one fifth x to the fifth plus three halves x squared. So the indefinite integral is one fifth x to the fifth plus three halves x squared plus a constant. That's how we take the antiderivative and the indefinite integral of a polynomial function. I would like you to push pause on this video and try to find this indefinite integral. Try this on your own. And then in the next video, I'll show you how to do it.